Hi everyone, I am Dr. Rupa, ophthalmologist and lover of all things beauty, and today we are talking about retinol and if it's safe to use around your eyes. So if you're interested in learning more, keep watching. You may be like me right now, taking a little break from makeup and just trying to get your skin looking nice and healthy while we're in this kind of crazy time right now. And most dermatologists are going to advise even starting to use retinol when you're younger than me, who I'm in my 40s, because it just helps cell turnover. It helps with premature aging and those fine lines and wrinkles. You guys have heard me say this before, your eyelid skin is the thinnest skin in your body, known fact. So I know there were some concerns early on that retinol thinned your skin, and that's not necessarily true, but we do wanna be careful because it can do some other things. So retinol, let's talk about it. There's the over-the-counter version and then there is the prescription strength. The prescription strength, the generic name for it is? Tretinoin. Tretinoin. I have to listen to them. I can't, it's one of those words where I see it and I can't say it properly. I'm just gonna call it retinol. What's the difference between retinol and Retin-A or tretinoin? Tritinoin is the prescription strength, so it's just a higher strength of the retinol. Typically, when you buy it in over-the-counter creams like this, it's going to be less than 1%. I've got right here a 0.5%, but it can go down as low as 0.25, 0.3%, all the way up to about 1%. So that's the difference. A lot of dermatologists say it should just be part of your nightly routine. I would caution you to know what your skin is used to. I cannot take using a retinol cream. Even this 0.5%, I can't use it nightly. It makes my skin dry. So I start slow, once a week, and then you can build up to doing it two or three times a week. Every day just might not be where you need to be. And so you need to really work with your skin to find out what's the proper percentage as well as the, the proper amount of time. Retinol is great because it reverses the signs of sun damage. And you have to know that all of aging is just photo aging. It's all from the sunlight. So it's going to help reverse a lot of those signs, you know, even some little hyperpigmentation, the fine lines, the wrinkles, it tightens pores and it makes your skin smoother. So a lot of great benefits, but is it safe around your eyes? Now, my skin is actually pretty good and I've never really needed to use retinol or never felt the need to use retinol till about this year, I'm 44 now, so I, really have noticed very fine lines around my eyes right here. And so I was kind of piling this stuff on. First, you just need a pea-sized amount. This is not like your nightly moisturizing cream. You don't need a ton. You really just need a pea-sized amount and then spread it all over your face. You don't need a lot. And I can't emphasize that enough. But second, I wanted to find out if by putting it under my eyes, if I was doing any damage to the eyes themselves, what happens if it inadvertently gets in the eyes? What happens even just the, the chemical can absorb a little bit into the blood circulation, the tissues around your eyes. So retinol actually can be really toxic to the meibomian glands and the goblet cells of your conjunctiva. So the meibomian glands make the oil for your tear layer and the goblet cells make the mucin. Both of those are really necessary because your tears don't actually just have water in them. They have a combination of oil and fat. So made from the meibomian glands and the, mus the goblet cells and then your lacrimal gland makes the water. So that combination is really, really important at preventing dry eye because if you don't have enough oil or fat inside your tear film, your tears are gonna to evaporate too quickly and that's gonna cause evaporative dry eye syndrome. Dry eyes, unfortunately, is more common in older women, 50s, 60s, and those are the women that tend to be using the retinol. So you have to be really, really careful because retinol has been shown to cause cell death of the goblet cells and the meibomian glands. That's one of the reasons why if an individual is taking Retin-A, you can't get LASIK because they're so worried about the dry eye that Retin-A will cause. And again, that's systemic medication. Retin-A, you're typically taking it for acne, but some of the studies have been shown with topical as well. So you just wanna be mindful of that. If you have dry eye, 
you might want to go ahead and stop. There's some case reports and anecdotal evidence. You know, I know some doctors that have mentioned when they see patients that have really, really bad dry eyes and when they stop using the retinol, their dry eyes gets a lot better. So if that's you, you might want to take a second look at your retinol creams and whether or not you should be putting it as close to your eye area. If you're going to use retinol, what I would advise you to do is make sure you're using a really nice hydrating cream. Make sure you're using a lower percentage. I would go ahead and get two different strengths and use the lower dose, the 0.25 maybe, around your eyelids. I think it's just going to keep it a little safer. But if you have dry eyes, I'd warn you to go ahead and, and be mindful of that. And again, we don't know. This could cause permanent cell death. So if you're worried about it all, two things that I would say to do to just make it so you don't even need the retinol, sunscreen every single day, whether it's rain or shine. You probably heard of this SPF 30 at the very minimum. I lived in New York City for eight years, even on winter, cold, snowy days, I still threw on that sunscreen and get it right on up in there, like right underneath your eyes. And then second, I live in Hawaii. So there's a lot of sun. I have the kind of skin that pigments really easily. I always wear a huge, huge hat and that's just mandatory. I get one with UPF. So not just one that covers, but something that's actually got some UPF 50 in it. And I'll link to my favorite one below. It's expensive, but it's so worth it. If it's going to save my skin, it's worth it. Now, if you actually get it in the eye itself, of course, like anything that's a chemical that you're getting in the eye, flush it out um, and just try to get as much of it out of the eye as possible. I don't think it's going to cause serious harm right away. It's not like an acid or a base injury, but you just want to get it out because you don't want all of that um, topical stuff just hanging around. Last, retinol makes you very sun sensitive. So the best thing to do is to make sure you're using it at nighttime. Put it on clean skin, wait five or 10 minutes, and then do a nice moisturizing cream on top of it just to make sure that your skin's not getting too dry. It's what I do. Uh, don't use it in the morning because it can cause a lot of problems when you're outdoors and sunlight. I mean, even just here, you can see how bright my bedroom is. That's going to be enough, even though I've got like UV light protecting, you know, it's still going to be enough. So use it at nighttime just to keep your skin healthier. Hope that was helpful. My little quick and dirty explanation of retinol and about it in the eyes. Go for an over-the-counter, lower strength if absolutely necessary, mix it with hydrating creams, and just be mindful about not getting too close to the eye area. Thank you guys and from one beauty lover to another. And please let me know if you have any other questions about retinol. Again, this channel is for medical education, for entertainment, but it can't provide specific medical advice. All right, thank you all. I am Dr. Rupa, mahalo.